You can add this auto highlighting feature to your Excel spreadsheet in just two steps. If you have a large table that's difficult to manage, this feature can greatly increase the readability of your spreadsheet. It will be more user-friendly and attractive to view and manage. And it's actually a super simple process to set up. Stick around until the end because I'll be sharing the done for you VBA code that can help you implement this on any spreadsheet you have in just one click. Hi, I'm Rebecca and I teach Excel users how to create spreadsheets they can be proud of. If you use Excel in any capacity, you're in the right place. No matter what kind of spreadsheets you have, I'm sure they could use a little updating. That's why I created the Spreadsheet Tune-Up, a free training just for you. In five short videos, I'll teach you the first steps you need to optimize any spreadsheet. Before we get into the conditional formatting, I want to show you the functions that are going to be the backbone or the building blocks of this uh, method. The first one is called row, and this returns the um, the row number where the cell where the function is. So this is in the fourth row, so that's why the number is four. The column function is the same, but it's for the column. So here it's three because it's in the third column. Similar but different is this cell function. This returns the row number of the active cell. So you can see wherever I have selected, I'm gonna have A1 selected, and this is going to change to one as soon as I recalculate. This is an important um, part of the method is we have to pick how are we going to make this formula recalculate because it doesn't do that automatically. So if you go over to the formulas tab, I'm going to go all the way over here to calculate now and when I and you can see that there is a shortcut key F9. So I'm going to first I'm going to just click this button and watch what happens. See the cell row and the cell call both change to 1 because the selected cell or the active cell is A1 in the first row and the first column. Now I'm going to go down here and uh, use the keyboard shortcut F9 and you can see that the row changed to 10 and the column changed to five. So that is, uh, these are the functions that are gonna make up the formula that we use in the conditional formatting. So now let's get that set up. Uh, I have an Excel table set up here, and I always prefer to format my data as an Excel table. And you can select everything by using the keyboard shortcut Control A, then go up to conditional formatting in the Home tab, and we're going to choose new rule and then select a rule type. We will select use a formula to determine which cells to format. So the most basic one we'll start out with is um, row open and close parentheses equals cell and then in inside that function inside double quotes we'll put row. So this is saying if the cell, if the row number of the current cell is equal to the row number of the active cell, then it will apply the formatting. And I'm going to choose this color, this light pink, and now click OK. So now you can see since this is the active or it was the active cell, that that row is highlighted. Now when I move, I have to click F9 and that will um, move that highlighting. We're gonna fix that later so that it's automatic, but um, not yet. We gotta get the rest of this conditional formatting set up. You can see that that works. At this point, you could create a whole nother rule just for the columns, but I'm just gonna combine the rows and columns formatting into one, um, one formula. So right before this row, you need to use the OR function. And then the OR function will highlight a cell if it's in the same row or the same column as the active cell. So the first condition is that row equals cell row that we already did, and then we'll put a comma. And now we're gonna do the same exact thing except for, for columns. So I'll type column, and then open and close parentheses equals cell, open parentheses, open double quotes, lowercase c-o-l for call. Close double quotes and close parentheses. And we need to close one more parentheses to close up that or function. So now whether it's in the same row or the same column as the active cell, this formatting will be applied. And we will apply. And you can see that it worked. 
and when I click F9, it recalculates over there. One more thing I want to show you before you move on is how you can create a crosshairs effect. So open up the conditional formatting rules manager and with the rule that you we just set up, duplicate that. And then in the one that is um, shown first, double click and we're just going to change this function from or to and. And what this does logically is it will now only apply the formatting where the row and the column are equal to the active cell, which means the active cell is the cell that's being evaluated. So we're going to change the formatting and I'm just going to choose a darker shade of pink and OK. Make sure that the applies to is exactly the same and that the darker color is first and apply. OK, so now you can see the active cell is being highlighted in a darker color and it creates this nice crosshairs effect. Now it's finally time to take care of this auto calculation issue and the way to solve this is with VBA code. So come up to the developer tab. If you don't have the developer tab, you can right click on, on anywhere on the ribbon, click on customize the ribbon and then make sure that the developer tab over here is checked. Once you have that, you can come over here to Visual Basic and that opens up uh, the Visual Basic editor. When you come over here, you'll see in the Microsoft Excel objects folder, you'll see one, sh one page for every sheet that you have in your workbook. The one that I'm working on is called source data. So that's what it says in parentheses. And you want to find the sheet where your table is. And then up here in this first drop down, choose worksheet and you will automatically get a private sub, which is a, a sub, um, it's an abbreviation for sub procedure. Anyway, it's worksheet underscore selection change. So on the event that the selection of the, on the worksheet changes, this, everything, all the code that's inside this sub will run. And it's very simple. I don't even have to copy and paste. All we have to do is type the words target dot calculate inside of this worksheet selection change. Now, anytime. OK, so let's save this first. I'll show you. So save that and we can close VBA. Now, anytime the selection, anytime you change selections on your worksheet now, it automatically calculates. So it, it's like it, as if it's typing F9 or on the formula sheet, we're typing calculate, we're clicking on this calculate now button. It's like we're doing that every time we change selections on the worksheet. Now the question is, what do you do if you have more than one sheet that needs this highlighting feature implemented and you want to save some time? Well, here's the fastest way that you could possibly do this. Instead of going through the trouble of selecting conditional formatting, typing in all those formulas, you can instead just open up the developer tab, go to Visual Basic, find the worksheet that you need to um, that you need to add this feature to, and then paste this code, which comes from the description box of this video. I wrote it myself. It um, this is the same thing. It, it turns on the auto calculating, and this sub will only run when you click on this run button and you only should run it one time because it sets up all of that conditional formatting with just the click of a button. You can see here it works on the first table that is on that table on that sheet. So you so your data has to be formatted as an Excel table. If you need to know more about that, you can check out my spreadsheet tune up. But real quick, you can click insert and then table and it will format this as an Excel table. It's already done here. Even if you don't understand this code, the you can see here, this is the same exact formula that we put in that highlighted the rows and the columns. And then this is the function that highlights the active cell. So in this group where we're highlighting the row and the column, um, the color that I chose is a theme color. It's just the first accent color. And then the tint and shade is um, on a scale of negative one, which is the darkest, to one, which is the lightest. So 0.75 is a moderately light color. 
And then down here, it's got the same like theme color, but the tint and shade is negative 0.25. So that's why it's going to be a darker color. So you can fiddle with this if you want to. Um, and then you should really just run this sub one time per sheet. So when you put this on the on the table or on the on this page, come up here to this play button and run it. So click run. It nothing pops up, but when you go back to your sheet, you can see that it it applied that. Um, if you wanted to at this point like change these colors, you would come up to this conditional formatting and clear the rules for this table because you don't want to duplicate those and then change this. Let's say I want this to be slightly lighter. I'm just going to do negative five. Oh no, that would be the opposite. Let's do negative mm, 0.1 and then run that. And that's slightly lighter. So the workflow is significantly faster now. So if you had multiple sheets, you would just go to each sheet, open up the visual basic. Whoops. Open up the Visual Basic, paste this whole thing on the sheet and run it. And that would set up all this conditional formatting in just one click. The great thing is these rules are now just out here in the conditional formatting rules manager. So you could just modify them however you wanted. Um, you could also change the theme. So if you go up to page layout and then colors, when you change the theme, these colors will change too because they're based on this workbook palette. If you implement the VBA code, your file will need to be saved as a macro enabled workbook. Macros do not work on Excel for the web or Excel for teams. Try it out and let me know in the comments how it works for you. I can't wait to talk to you.